Hi, I'm John Lampy. I'm from a company called Green Shoots. I'm a licensed pesticide applicator in the areas of forests and natural areas. Today I'm going to talk about invasive knotweed. And specifically, this is addressed to the homeowner and it gives them four easy steps to follow to control knotweed. Much of the advice regarding the control of knotweed is for people who are treating a large patch of invasive knotweed. When you treat a large infestation, you will need a bigger, more expensive sprayer. You will also need to buy more herbicide. And it will take you more time to plan your work and to do the actual treatment. We have a separate video on how to treat a large plot of knotweed. Many people, especially homeowners and property managers, have small patches of invasive knotweed. By a small patch, I mean one that is less than about 15 by 15 feet or four by four meters. Advice for these property owners is critical because many of them are surprised to have learned that that bamboo-like plant in their backyards is knotweed. Dread often follows that surprise because a little web-based research uncovers many scary photos like this one of knotweed growing through concrete. Others show it growing through pavement and inside houses. These horror stories get people's attention. But the knotweed horror stories largely misstate the problem. As the Royal Institution of Chartered Surveyors in Great Britain recently observed, it's extremely rare for invasive knotweed to threaten human-made structures. The risk of, with knotweed is less the harm it can do to human-built structures and more the harm it can do to the environment. Non-native knotweed is highly aggressive when it finds the growing conditions it likes, like this shoreline in Chesapeake Bay or this small stream in France. When knotweed forms a thicket like this, nothing else can grow. This is especially a problem at sites near waterways. This photo shows a knotweed infestation behind a small town business along a trout stream called Paint Creek in Northeast Iowa. Knotweed infestations like this provide miserable habitat for riparian species. Even worse, this kind of infestation can easily spread, especially in the spring when flooding occurs, crowns and rhizome fragments can be washed downstream and spread the infestation for miles. Here is a full map of that knotweed infestation along Paint Creek. The knotweed is identified in bright purple and it lines miles and miles of the creek. You can easily see how successive flood events have spread the knotweed downstream. The key therefore is attacking knotweed early before it becomes a massive infestation like this one. So don't panic. It's unlikely that your house is in danger from the knotweed infestation in your yard, but do plan to get rid of the knotweed you have because it can do significant harm to your garden, yard, and most importantly, sensitive ecosystems. There are several kinds of applications you can do. The most common is a foliar application. Foliar applications are typically used for large infestations. This photo shows a foliar application of foam to Japanese knotweed. Foliar applications can be very effective and efficient. They aren't, however, always suited for small infestations. Foliar applications are not as precise, especially for knotweed close to desirable plants, a more precise method is necessary. Injection is probably the most common alternative to a spray application. For an injection, the applicator inserts a needle into the hollow of a knotweed stem and typically injects three to five milliliters of undiluted glyphosate. Injections work well for killing knotweed. However, the injection method has shortcomings. First, injections use a lot of herbicide. A study by Jones and colleagues from Swansea University in Wales found injections need about 15 times more glyphosate per unit area than spray treatments. Second, because of the use of high quantities of herbicide, injections may harm non-target plants. A 2008 greenhouse study by Tim Miller from Washington State saw about twice as much injury to non-target plants with injection as opposed to another method, foliar wiping. In addition, when high doses of glyphosate have been applied, glyphosate can persist in soils. 
This could affect restoration of a site for some months after a treatment. Third, injection doesn't work with stems under a half inch. For these small stems, another method of application must be used. This means you will have to go back through the patch to treat those small stems or bring another dispenser with you while doing the injections. Finally, injectors available on the market are expensive. Most cost over $200 past, we at Green Shoots have advised people with small patches to use a cut stem treatment method. This method is easy to do, uses moderate amounts of herbicide, and is very accurate. However, the results typically aren't as good as with spraying or injection. The ideal method of, for a small infestation would be one that first is about as effective as spray or injection, second eliminates the drift associated with sprays, Third, can be used on knotweed stems of any size. Fourth, uses significantly less herbicide than injection. And fifth, uses inexpensive equipment and chemical. One alternative to spraying an injection is what I call the direct application of herbicide to foliage. With direct application, there is no intervening airspace between the application device and the foliage. Wiping is an example of a direct application method. It has been used for decades on many kinds of weeds. Direct application works especially well with a systemic herbicide like glyphosate. Years of research have indicated that glyphosate is most effective when it is applied in a concentrated dose. With direct application, you typically use a more concentrated mixture, anywhere from 4 to 20% active ingredient. Because you use that concentrated dose, you don't need to get complete coverage of the target weed. Instead, you only need to cover about 15 to 30 percent of the foliage. This makes glyphosate the perfect herbicide for direct application methods such as wiping. In an agricultural setting, herbicide is usually wiped onto leaves. Knotweed stems, however, can be quite tall, making leaf wiping very difficult. One way to get around this problem of tall knotweed plants is to directly apply herbicide to the knotweed stem. Fortunately, agricultural research indicates that the green stems of plants can absorb herbicide efficiently. In fact, one study by Wills in 1978 found that, quote, when applied in equal quantities, glyphosate was more toxic to cotton when applied to mature stems than to immature stem tissue or to leaves. So, what about applications to knotweed stems? As mentioned, in 2008, Tim Miller from Washington State investigated wiping knotweed stems with three different herbicides, glyphosate, triclopyr, and amazapyr. He wiped both uncut stems and stems cut at a height of three feet. With both wiping methods, control was similar to injection one year after treatment. As shown in this image, knotweed's vascular bundles containing the phloem are located near the outer surface of the knotweed stems. It is through the phloem that the herbicide gets transported down to the underground rhizome of the knotweed. Therefore, a direct application method such as wiping knotweed stems should provide good access to vascular tissue. Given this research, we thought it made sense to test direct application of foam herbicide onto the mature portion of the knotweed stems near the base. Foam herbicide works really well for direct application because it, because it clings tightly to the surface of the stem. A liquid wiped on any foliage, on the other hand, tends to beat up and run off the waxy surface of the foliage. Wiping with foam herbicide can also work for stems of any thickness. To do our testing, we mix glyphosate herbicide in our small foam herbicide dispenser, which contains 140 milliliters of liquid or a little less than five ounces. We created a glyphosate solution containing 20% active ingredient. On some of the stems on which we did our direct applications, we also used a knife to scrape the stem to remove outer tissue to better expose vascular tissue. We also applied herbicide to the frilled portion at the bottom of the stem. Whether this additional step of scraping and applying the herbicide helped materially is unclear. However, it certainly wouldn't hurt to do it if you have a little extra time. Both techniques worked really well, 
And as you can see in the photo at right, non-target vegetation came back with a vengeance, which meant off-target harm was minimal. So from the beginning, here are the steps for doing a foam wiping application on knotweed stems. First, it's best to knock down the dead stems in the stand in winter or early spring to avoid the nearly impenetrable thicket you see here. If you didn't do this, go through the patch and knock down the dead stems before you do your treatment. I would do this as early as possible in the year. In terms of timing, treat as late as possible in the year, but before a killing frost. I like to wait to treat until after the knotweed has flowered. The knotweed plant shown here has already flowered. You know this because the flower petals have fallen off. I like this time for two reasons. First, it's a natural time for a plant to start storing carbohydrates underground. Second, you don't have to worry about harming bees foraging in the knotweed. Next, mix the herbicide solution for wiping. These are the amounts you would add to the small foam herbicide dispenser to create a solution with 20% active ingredient. This is the same mixture we use for cut stem treatments. Third, plan your order of treatment. For example, you could start in the middle of the patch and spiral outward. You could start at one end of the patch and weave through it. I like this method because you can stand up easily and stretch after a pass through the patch. Just don't treat all the stems on the periphery first and don't use any method where you have to repeatedly move past stems that have recently been treated. If you do, you will increase the chances of getting herbicide on your clothes as you maneuver past the treated stem. Fourth, you can do the direct application in different ways. For example, you can apply the foam from the nozzle directly onto the stem. If the stem is dirty, run a gloved hand up and down the stem to clean it off before applying. Apply two to six pumps of foam with the small foam herbicide dispenser to about 15 to 20 inches of the knotweed stem. Two pumps for stems around a half inch and under and up to six pumps for the largest stems. Each pump emits 0.8 milliliters of solution. Space the foam dollops a few inches apart on the stem. If the stem remains dirty after you wiped it, don't apply foam there. Dirt can neutralize glyphosate herbicide. You can also apply the foam in long vertical dollops. Use whatever method is easiest for you. Over the next 20 to 30 minutes, the foam will slowly slide down the stem and soak into it. Should you cut off the tops of the stems like Tim Miller did with some of the knotweed he wiped in his testing? I would not. It didn't seem to be beneficial and it's more work. A variation you could use would be to use a rubber glove to wipe the foam along the stem. If you do this technique, use a high quality rubber glove with no cracks or holes. This glove is pretty thick, about six mil. If you use a glove in our large dispenser, you can move pretty fast with this technique. It would work especially well with two people. Finally, for smaller, low-lying stems, I recommend the drizzle technique. This works well for knotweed that comes up after the first year of treatments. With this technique, you simply drizzle the foam herbicide onto the leaves, cover about 30% of the foliage. With the drizzle technique, I recommend using a solution that is about 4% active ingredient. The benefit of this technique is that you don't have to bend down as much, but if there are desirable plants beneath the knotweed foliage, be careful. The foam herbicide can drip off the leaves as the foam dissipates. According to published studies and my work and calculations, the direct application of foam as described here will use about half as much herbicide as stem injection. This chart shows the approximate amounts of active ingredient used with the different techniques to treat a large stem. With additional experimentation, it may well be possible to use less herbicide with foam wiping of the knotweed stems. After all, the technique ultimately is very similar to foam spray or foliar drop spray that targets knotweed stems. At the present, I recommend using the amounts described here to ensure a good treatment outcome. Our Green Shoots channel has several other videos on treating knotweed. 
One is nine common mistakes to avoid in trying to control invasive knotweed. Another is control a large stand of Japanese knotweed in four phases. I keep up with the most recent scientific literature on knotweed and am constantly tweaking knotweed control techniques. I urge you to subscribe to get our latest knotweed videos. Thank you for watching.